Hey, I'm Doug, and welcome to week one of a four-part video series on the Boss GT1000 Core. Starting this week, I will be joined for the next four weeks by my co-host, Jeff Slinga from Boss, as we unpack this very exciting device. In this video, I'm going to play through a range of demos across a range of styles, and Jeff and I are going to talk about some of the stuff that's happening in the background with this box. In week two, we're going to play through the most common amp and effects models that you're going to want to hear and do some sound design with those. In week three, we're going to incorporate this in a pedal board, probably incorporating a switcher as well, so we can do some really cool stuff utilizing this, as well as some of the onboard MIDI. Then finally, in week four, we're going to build some wild and crazy rigs using stuff like the four cable method and most likely the Waza tube amp expander that's kind of right behind me. With that said, it's my pleasure to introduce my co-host for this series, Jeff Slingluff from Boss. Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do, starting off with your title. I am the strategic product manager for Boss here in the United States for Boss and Roland guitar amplifiers. And what I do, I do with uh, um, everything that is Boss here in the United States, whether it be some marketing things, product management things, uh, you know, things like along those lines. I also interface a lot with the uh, engineers and team in Japan a lot, right? So I'm kind of a liaison and conversation back and forth with them. So that's what I do. <laughs> If I can tell you nothing else, just roll back and look at Doug's face. He is feeling the dynamics of this amplifier. With this guy, we had to figure out a way to get that through whatever your delivery system is, whether that be a PA system or you know studio monitors or whatever. And we had to figure out a way to get the, that experience of the impedance and the loading and the dynamics of that amplifier. And that's what's in there is, is air technology. And the dynamics is the key portion of it. So, And you can see it on Doug's face. A number of the delays and reverbs have this ducking effect built in. So it means that you can play and not have the sea of reverb, but when you stop playing or back off dynamically, the reverb makes its way back in and the delay makes its way back in. So honestly, this is about the art of sound design, which, you know, regardless of whether you got a, a DS1 or, you know, any pedal out there, we're all kind of doing the same thing, which is using the gear to craft a sound. So I was super excited with that. Super excited. Yeah, that, that, that verb sounds great. And just a one up on the uh, conversation of ducking, you know, and using dynamics, you know, we'll get to, into this later in a deeper conversation, but there's actually these dividers where you can run parallel paths and you can actually do dynamic control. So literally when you play hard, it could be one amp and when you play soft, it could be the other amp and or different effects or it, like we'll get into it deeper. But I'm glad you brought up the whole ducking thing because one, it's gorgeous on on obviously on a reverb or a delay, but there are many, many other uses for it. And one of the features of the GC 1000 core is that you could actually define what that is yourself by putting different things in different orders. If you're just kind of jumping over to multi-effects from traditional stomp boxes, there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But the great thing about the deep editor is that it's really kind of like a, a microcosm of what your pedal board looks like as you kind of go from left to right there. It's just a signal chain. Don't be freaked out about this. I think the most important thing to keep in mind is, first of all, there's some great stock presets. That's exactly where I started. The, this one I dialed up on my own because I, once you kind of figure out what you like, then it's just kind of like, oh, this is the amp that I want. I have a few amps in the room. 
when I want a particular sound, I reach for that amp. So the same thing happens inside here. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're new to the modeling thing or IRs or, or, or you know, kind of multi-effects, it's a gateway to tone. And you just, you do what you already do with your ear. You find what you like and you just use it over and over. All right, let's get to the next clip. The thing is, I was playing, I was like, wow, I can feel this thing talking to me through the strings. I know that, that sounds a little wacky, but just kind of what happened. Jeff? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, you just brought up a whole bunch of things that I, I could go on for an hour now. Hey, no, no, right, that's so. the last That's the last clip. So you know what? I'll go for Rock a few seconds. the oh, house. Here, right? So first off, one of the things that, that is uh, really integral to a guitar amplifier is the impedance of the speaker. We talk about a, sp a speaker cabinet being 16 ohm or 8 ohms. The truth is, is that the frequency response of the speaker is one thing which is coming out, but the, uh, the speaker has an impedance response and it's not 16 ohms across the, the frequencies. It actually has a low frequency resonant bump and it comes up and it, and it moves through there. Typically, that resonance is going to be about the, the um, you know, for a 412 cabinet, typical Marshall cabinet, it's about 120 hertz, which is interestingly your A note on your guitar. Um, and, you know, some of the bigger cabinets, like an oversized Mesa cabinet, it's around 80 hertz, as Doug called out, right, which is, um, you know, guitar, your low E is 82.5, I think, right? So, so, but what happens is the speaker moves, it resonates, and it sends it back up into the transform. This is causing transformer distortion. Uh, also, your presence knob is actually part of that impedance in the movement of that speaker. So as that speaker moves, it comes back. Now, in a live amplifier, when you talk about like a Katana amplifier, we were capable of doing it in the amplifier so it does it live just like a tube amp does. Next to an amplifier is the same thing. One of the tricks of the uh, um, GT1000 you know, uh, series uh, was getting that air technology, which is just trying to get to simulate that experience through whatever delivery system you have, whether it's studio monitors, PA, or even into another amplifier. So that's one of the big things that's definitional about what, what Doug is talking about. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd like to invite you to do so. And please ring the bell so we can let you know when the next video in the series goes online. And also, if you can, smash the like button. It's always a help and it's always appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.